Thank you, uh, Frank. Uh, thank you, Martin. Thank you, uh, everybody, um, for inviting me along today and giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, as Frank said, I'm the CEO of the Immigrant Council of Ireland, and I've had the honour of doing uh, working within the organisation since 2004 um, and being CEO of it since 2015. Um, mostly what I'm going to talk about this afternoon actually follows very much on from what Martha has just said in terms of the Irish response to Ukraine and the situation there. Um, but before I get on to that, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the organisation for those of you that may not be familiar with us. So we were established in 2001 um, by Sister Stanislaus Kennedy. Some of you will know Sister Stan from Focus Ireland and different things like that. Uh, she established us back in 2001 in emergence to the fact that Ireland um, had gone from being a country of emigration to being a country of immigration. Um, so essentially we were set up to respond to the needs of, of, of uh, emerging migrant communities in Ireland. Um, and the first need that people have and still remains a strong need today is information, um, clarity on legal rights and entitlements for, for migrants in Ireland. And that's a, a key role to what we do as an organisation um, uh, in uh, Dublin and at a national level and in support of things like the nationwide network of citizens information centres across the countries, uh, across the country. Um, so we, we provide information and advice on that, but we also then in 2006 became an independent law centre. So we've solicitors that can take strategic or very vulnerable cases from that information provision and provide free legal representation um, in those cases. Um, and in that we tend to prioritise kind of extreme vulnerability. We work with, around a lot of gender-based violence issues for migrant women. We work in uh, large-scale support of uh, victims of human trafficking in Ireland and unaccompanied minor children as well as a big part of our work which we do um, in partnership with the Irish Refugee Council and with, with law firms in Ireland as well. Um, so that's the legal side of our house. The, the integration side of our house then does a lot of work around political participation. So we work with people about their voting rights. We work with political parties about attracting in people from a migrant background into their ranks um, and promoting them throughout uh, the electoral process uh, from local government uh, and upwards. Um, and we also work, I suppose, uh, in terms of the narrative in Ireland around diversity and politics in general. So, so that's a big part of our integration work. Another big part of our integration work is related in, in the areas of um, uh, um, uh, migrant leadership and capacity building, so working with migrant leaders from different communities around um, their needs and their own self-advocacy. Um, and then we also act, I suppose, as much as we can as a resource to everybody in terms of integration, expertise, um, local authorities, city council, any kind of groups that, that are working in the area, anything we can do as a, as a relatively small organisation to provide a bit of support around thinking through what integration is. So, so an event like today is fantastic because it is at low Local level that integration happens. You can have all the national strategies that you want um, and they're important. You can have all the governmental level thinking about it as you want and that is important too but ultimately integration is a local thing. It's a conversation at a local level. It's a conversation outside the school. It's a conversation over the counter in the post office. It's a very real community thing and that's where integration really actually happens. Um, so the work of, of the Twilight Community Group here in Kilkenny and um, spreading its wings uh, more nationwide as well is, is massively, massively important. Uh, so I want to commend you for that and, and again thank you for the invitation to come down. Um I'm just going to touch very briefly um, on, on the Irish response um, to the invasion of Ukraine. Um, so essentially, I suppose, in the last couple of weeks, and, and following on very much from what Martha has said, we're all reacting, I suppose, you know, incredibly strongly in terms of um, our outrage and our, and our absolute disgust at what has happened. Um, it's an unnatural disaster, essentially, uh, and the scale of, of which we currently have, you know, it's a scale of which is staggering, um, and the impacts of which will be felt for generations, unfortunately. Um, in addition, um, we have no way of estimating Really how long the conflict will endure for, um, how many Ukrainians will suffer and lose their lives, and for how long those who have fled the country um, will be forced to remain displaced. Um, and this uncertainty, coupled with the daily reports um, and further, of further attacks and, and casualties, um, could give us cause for despair and hopelessness. Um, but we have to be resilient, essentially, against such feelings, because despair and hopelessness only serve the tyrants uh, behind war. 
and do nothing to offer us a path out of a crisis? Um, and the answer, as always, um, is in fostering and, and, and deepening our human connection to those who are suffering, um, and that's the people of Ukraine. Um, so the Irish public, as everyone's well aware, ha has reacted incredibly strongly in the last couple of weeks uh, and has shown our true colours again and again. Um, the immense outpouring of public goodwill has demonstrated um, that the values of the Irish public are compassion and empathy and solidarity. And these things are our guiding light. Um, and in line with this public sentiment, um, the Irish government has reacted swiftly and very decisively in response to the emerging crisis as well, uh, with the values of solidarity and compassion firmly uh, to the forefront of our national response. Um, and the government are to be commended for this, definitely. However, what is needed now is uh, real large-scale planning and investment in the short and medium and long-term implications of the likely movement of tens of thousands of Ukrainian nationals to Ireland um, in the coming weeks and months. Um, if the number of migrants um, arriving in Ireland does reach over the 100,000 mooted, which is, is, is incredibly likely, and if not, you know, significantly more than that, you know, what that represents for Ireland is a, is a doubling of uh, what is a normal year's worth of migration within the, within the space of, of a couple of weeks and months, which of course pales in significance when you consider, as Martha has just said, the impact on neighbouring countries to Poland, uh, or sorry, neighbouring countries to Ukraine, such as Poland, who are dealing with unprecedented numbers. Um, that being said, in Ireland, um the scaling up of all our services and all our responses to the needs of, of this um, very sudden kind of movement of people to Ireland is an absolute necessity. Thankfully, the temporary protection directive from the EU has sorted out most of the immigration issues for maybe 90-95% of those that will come here, um, in that at least our immigration rights and entitlements will be clear. Um, but behind every person uh, is, is, or sorry, behind every number is a, is a person with complex needs. They have, will have trauma, they'll have fear, hope, they'll have skills, qualifications, they'll have language needs. Um, there will be children, and there are children right now who just a few short weeks ago were sitting in a school in Kiev or Kharkiv and are now sitting in a school in Kilkenny or Castlebar. Um, so uh, I suppose one reflection that we would have as well, and it's a difficult one, is that, you know, that it has taken this most recent tragedy to inspire a level of European governmental solidarity, um, which was sadly lacking, say, for example, in 2015 or 2016, when Syrian nationals sought to seek refuge on this continent, um, should be reflected upon in the extreme. Um, and it is entirely appropriate and entirely uh, apt that Ireland and the European Union in, in particular respond as we are to Ukrainians. Um, and we hope, I suppose, that the reflection that we will have from this situation um, will give us uh, the perspective that we need to really look at migration and integration, not just at a national level, but at a European level, and, and to regard it as a, a, the extremely human thing it is. Um, it is not statistics, it is not policies, it is not legislation, it is all those things in some ways, but ultimately what it is is a human a human thing. The level of solidarity that exists at a European level now around this is, is unprecedented and it's inspiring and it's something that we need to keep and it's something that we need to build into the fabric of migration and integration at a European level and in Ireland as we go forward. Um, the framework that we need to build in Ireland to receive Ukrainian nationals will be complex and multi-dimensional. Um, in addition, um, there's a need for, to, in addition to the need for cross-departmental coordination at senior government level, there's a need for clear communication and collaboration with civil society, with community groups, including crucially uh, community groups that are, are, are led by Ukrainian and, and Polish uh, community members, with faith-based faith groups and, and many more. Um, investment will be needed um, and hopefully in time supported and supplemented by aid from the European Union. And it is in this context that, that groups and organisations like the Twilight Community Group are so massively important because what we know from, say for example, a meeting yesterday of 28 different organisations that are supporting Ukrainians here in Ireland is that it's already happening. While the governmental response is slowly coming into being and the structure is coming into being, people right now are knocking on doors and they're going and visiting people and helping them to get PPS numbers 
numbers, helping them to get their kids into local schools, doing everything that is needed on a very human level and a very human basis. And it is that that will be our salvation. Again, we need the structure, we need the investment, we need the policy and, and strategy around it. But ultimately, what we need people to do is reach out at a local level. So the work you do here through this organisation um, and, and through all the community engagement that you do is so tremendously important and it will be the salvation of, of the situation. Um, the structures that we build um, in, in response to those who, who flee from Ukraine will be built on the existing goodwill and the existing structures and, and positive community action that has already got on around migration and integration in Ireland. And it will serve us as we go forward um, as, as a country to react to those who are already here in direct provision, um, those even who are experiencing homelessness uh, and those who come seeking protection in the future. Um, all of these social issues um, have a solution uh, and they are not competing they can all they all um, have uh, the solution of as I say that human connection that we need to foster supported by strategies and investment um, so this is our opportunity to develop a, a new landscape for migration and integration rights in Ireland uh, one that has compassion and solidarity at its core um, and we owe this to the Ukrainian child who's going to be sitting in that classroom in, in you know Kilkenny or Carlo to get it right. Um, we owe it to the Nigerian family living in direct provision. Um, we owe it to ourselves as a country who so evidently has an incredibly strong value-based national psyche to demonstrate that those values come to the fore again and again and are acted upon. Um, and though it brings with it many challenges, we have to remember that migration is an overwhelmingly positive reality in Ireland and has been for numerous decades now. Um, and in tragedy, we, we have to look for the humanity. Uh, we look to those whose lives have been destroyed by the senseless aggression and war and we stand shoulder to shoulder with them. Uh, we offer them solidarity because there's absolutely no difference between us and them save for the vagaries of geography, history and look. Um, as Marta alluded to earlier, this is not a temporary situation either, and there is a temptation that we view it as one. Um, those that come here will need support in the short, medium and long term, and we have to think of it as being something that will be, some, you know, as a country in Ireland and at a European level that we'll be responding to for many, many months and possibly years to come. Uh, and therefore we need to, to, to set the wheels and the structures in motion now for how we respond to it um, and, and take it as being that those that come here, this will be their home for the time being and we need to build that around them. Um, so, um, I'm getting strangely emotional. Um, so, as an organisation, the Immigrant Council are committing ourselves to, to working in support of Ukrainian and, and Eastern European and, and, <clears throat> and all other communities here in Ireland on information on legal rights and entitlements. And we've provided mm -hmm. webinars to Ukrainian uh, nationals coming here. We're providing our legal services. We're working with, with other organisations to try and formulate the civil society response to it. Many of you be familiar with the Red Cross uh, uh, pledges that are going on at the moment. They are going to be absolutely crucial and they're going to be crucial very soon. Um, we have sent Teresa Bukowska, who's our, our integration manager. She's currently in, in, in Poland on the border with Ukraine with a, a large scale project that we have that looks at the needs of unaccompanied minor children, trying to assess what the situation is there and what Ireland can do in response to that as well. So even though we are a small organisation, um, we're a national organisation um, and we, we put our shoulder to the wheel when it comes to these things, but at the same time we have to work in collaboration with everybody or we won't get anything done. Um, so we extend our uh, kind of hand of solidarity to everybody in terms of working collaboratively and we um, encourage you all to get in contact with us um, it's currently taken us a while to respond to emails and phone calls but we'll do our best um, and again to commend you for, for what's happening at, at a local level here um, and indeed at a national level in Ireland and uh, thank you for the time uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak to you. Cheers. Thank you.